NVIDIA is making a monster GPU. Big news for 2022, and monitors are getting completely insane. <laughs> Let's talk about it. Before that, this video is brought to you by InnoCN and their brand new 27C1U monitor. The 27C1U is a 27-inch IPS 4K HDR400 FreeSync monitor capable of displaying 100% of the sRGB color range, 1.07 billion colors, and up to 400 nits of brightness. Not only that, but it's base amount compatible, has one display port, one USB-C, two USB 3.0, two HDMI ports, and one 3.5 millimeter audio jack, allowing for a wide range of compatibility. Plus, the included stand is great, allowing you to turn in just about any direction you would want. So if you're looking for a new display for productivity, be sure to click the link in the description below. All right, we have a lot to go over today, but first let's go ahead and talk about that absolutely monster GPU that NVIDIA is preparing to release at some point in the future here. Now, what we're talking about is the GH100, which is supposedly going to be a GPU based on the Hopper architecture coming out from NVIDIA. Now, considering that it's a 100 series GPU and not a 102, I wouldn't be too surprised this ends up being a data center only GPU and is probably going to come in right before they move to an MCM design, as it looks like according to some leaks that were posted online that this is actually not going to be their first MCM GPU. However, it is going to be an absolutely massive, massive GPU and it's going to give us a pretty good idea of how big something like the next generation RTX 4090 could potentially be and guys it's looking really really big I mean you thought that the RTX 3090 was big this thing is absolutely massive let's go ahead and see what they had to say about it now this information comes over on Twitter from the Twitter users cop 87 Kimi as well as Greymon55 both of which have had quite a few leaks in the past and it starts off with cop 87 Kimi saying GH100 has a huge single die of slightly less than 1000 millimeters squared then below that Hassan replied by saying GH100 mono equals 1000 millimeters squared so GH100 MCM should be around 2 2000 millimeters squared for the GPU dies. Then Greymon55 respond by saying GH100 does not have MCM, it's still monolithic. So there you go. It looks like the GH100 GPU uh, is probably very likely not going to be an MCM design as these guys do seem to know what they're talking about. They seem to have a lot of inside information. Now we do know that the next generation RTX 40 series GPUs are going to be based off of the Lovelace architecture and not the Hopper architecture. However, uh, you know, it is possible that they are going to have a lot of things that are similar between them so you know I wouldn't be too surprised if something like a hopper GPU uh, in terms of its actual size is something that we could see on Lovelace that they do end up being like a similar size GPU with the Lovelace GPU just being probably a little bit more cut down and it's gonna have different stuff in the Lovelace GPU more ray tracing stuff like that versus something like hopper if it's meant for the data center it's not gonna have that ray tracing stuff it's gonna be all focused on compute and again probably gonna be a little bit larger but I do think that it's important that we take a look at this because yes it is gonna be you know, give us at least a rough idea of just how big something like Lovelace could potentially be. And if we actually take a look at it versus the RTX 3090, well, the 3090 is only coming in at around 628 millimeters squared. So you do the math there. And yes, if this does end up being based somewhat loosely around something like a GH100, could potentially be around 59% larger than the RTX 3090. And that's just accounting for stuff like CUDA cores. I mean, we're not talking about how much faster the clock speeds could be in something like an RTX 4090. So yeah, if the 4090 is going to be anything like the GH100 whatsoever, not only is it going to be massive, but on top of that, having a massively increased clock speed as well as potentially higher IPC is going to lead to a GPU that is going to be really, really fast. So if you're someone who's looking forward to the RTX 40 series, I think this gives us an idea that yes, some of those rumors talking about two times faster, at least in terms of compute, could actually be true. This card is going to be an absolute monster. But now let's go ahead and move on to the second topic and this is going to be an absolutely huge story if you're someone who's looking for a GPU in 2022 this is going to be absolutely great news for you which is something that we all love to hear because it looks like that Intel is going to be taking it very seriously when it comes to their graphics cards at least according to a post that they recently put over on Twitter let's go ahead and take a look at it and then I'll give you my thoughts on it so according to Raja Kadori over on Twitter he responded to PC Gamer who said help us Pat Gelsinger Intel is our only hope out of this nightmarish GPU 
crisis and then Raja Kadori actually responded by saying quote I'm with you PC gamer this is a huge issue for PC gamers and the industry at large at Intel graphics is working hard to find a path towards the mission getting millions of arc GPUs into the hands of PC gamers every year so this is definitely some great news for gamers is it looks like Intel is gonna be taking this thing seriously I mean millions of GPUs is definitely nothing to scoff at but it begs the question you know how many millions are we talking about and is it gonna be enough to actually satisfy the insane demand coming from the market at least right now I mean if we take a look at the Steam charts here we can see that there are around 120 million active users now of course all those 120 million people are not gonna be looking to upgrade maybe somewhere around like 30 million at the beginning of the RTX 30 series we're looking to upgrade at this point yeah you know who knows maybe a lot of those people were able to upgrade and we're only left with like maybe 10 million people who are still looking to upgrade right now of course it's always gonna continue every cycle more and more people wanting to but let's just say right now around 10 million people need to upgrade I mean if Intel is only able to produce a million or two million chips uh, maybe in this year well that's definitely not gonna be enough but if they're able to produce something like five or ten million chips you know at least in the current market yeah that actually could make an absolutely huge dent in terms of getting gamers the GPUs that they've been waiting for for such a long time so I guess we're just gonna have to wait and see you know how much of these GPUs Intel's actually able to produce considering they're on TSMC's six nanometer uh, process how quickly they're able to get them out what the price is and if they can continue to deliver just a massive amount of GPUs over the coming years and on top of that it's also gonna depend on what the market does if all the crypto Currency mining ends up crashing through the floor and all those cards end up on places like eBay well of course that's gonna have a massive impact as well but of course we're just gonna have to wait and see what happens throughout the rest of 2022 and finally let's go ahead and talk about this last story where PC monitors are getting absolutely out of control it looks like uh, the company BOE or Beijing Oriental Electronics Group has finally made a monitor that can get over 500 frames per second yep you heard me correctly a 500 Hertz monitor now we're talking about a 1080p 27 inch one millisecond display so yeah it's not going to be like a 4k a 500 hertz display that would be absolutely ridiculous and nobody would actually be able to run that but even so i think for a lot of esports gamers this is going to be a huge deal now realistically going over 240 hertz you're getting very very diminishing returns but if you go somewhere from like 240 hertz to 500 hertz that's such a massive difference that it could potentially actually give you a little bit of an edge if you're playing competitive games so if you're someone who's sitting there with a 60 or even 120 hertz display well I got some bad news for you because it looks like potentially in the near future you're gonna be playing against people with a 500 hertz display and that is just getting ridiculous at this point but we also have to talk about realistically you know is a LCD display gonna have fast enough response times fast enough gray to gray response times all that sort of stuff to give you the clarity that you need to actually take advantage of 500 hertz and honestly I would argue no even if this is gonna be a one millisecond display the crazy amount of speed you'd need to get out of this monitor to actually take advantage of a full 500 frames per second is going to be I think you know really pushing the edge of what LCD is even capable of honestly if this was an OLED display and it was 500 hertz yeah this would be in an, an just an absolutely incredibly fast display probably the fastest display that you would ever see possibly produced ever but if you're talking about LCD honestly we'll just have to wait and see when it comes out how good this display really is and if it's really worth purchasing over something like a 240 Hertz or even 360 Hertz display but yeah either way you slice it monitors are getting absolutely insane there's a ton of different technologies coming out this year whether you're looking for 4k 240 Hertz 1080p 500 Hertz or if you're looking for something like micro LED TVs or even QD OLED there's a lot of stuff coming out in 2022 and of course if you want to stay up to date on that stuff make sure you're subscribed because I think the whole display market is going absolutely crazy and it's going to be an absolutely great year for displays in 2022 but hey that's just what I think do you think that Intel is going to be able to make enough GPUs to make a dent in the whole GPU crisis or do you think they're going to come far short let me know your guys thoughts in the comments below and of course I'll see you in the next video if you made it to the end of the video be sure to drop a like every time you do so AMD and Nvidia get more stock also, if you want to see more, click here. You won't be disappointed.